We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. On today's segment of Know Your Rights, we're talking about the doorway to your home being a public place on private property. In United States versus Santana, police made a heroin purchase through an undercover cop using money they had marked. When police went back to Santana's home, they saw her standing in a doorway holding a paper bag. She stepped back inside her home and police followed her to make an arrest and seize the drugs and money they had just used for the drug buy. Santana argued that the arrest was unlawful because police entered her home without a warrant. She lost and was convicted. Santana appealed. The Supreme Court reviewed the case and decided that by standing in the threshold of her home, Santana was in a public place. They reasoned that being in your doorway makes you accessible to public view, conversation, hearing, and touch as if you're standing on a sidewalk. Her expectation of privacy went away because she was in this public space and police had the right to follow her into her home without a warrant because they were now in hot pursuit. This meant that they were concerned that Santana may destroy evidence and they wanted to stop that from happening. So remember that your doorway is not just a doorway. It's a legal gray zone that is a thin line between what is public and what is private. That wraps up our discussion for today. Stay informed, know your rights. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. What up, what up, you already know it's your boy Pistol. We outside today. As you can see, I got that thing on. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here in front of Sweet Chicks, one of my favorite spots when I'm in the city. No, actually, it's one of the top favorite spots when I'm in the city. You know what I'm saying? We here in front of it, repping it, like always. You already know, we rep our set, Lloyd, to what we do. And with that, we got Yaga in the building, straight out of Brooklyn. Did 14 years and a half, you know what I'm saying, for murder. And with that being said, let's get right to it, man. Your boy Pistol, dog in the yard. What up, what up, yo? What do you know? It's your boy Pistol Pete. Welcome back to Dog in the Yard. And today we got Yaga in the building straight out of Brooklyn. What up, Yaga? How you been, brother? I'm good. I'm feeling blessed. How's everything, man? Everything good. Everything blessed, bro. Okay, okay. Blessed to the point where sometimes I can't even believe it. That's cool. That's yeah. great, man. That's a great thing to know, man. Uh -huh. When you feel it, that's great. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's good to feel, you know, to get up and feel great. Yes. To know that you're blessed. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. We all blessed. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We got a second chance to be home. Yes. And do the right thing. Yes. Starting with that. Yes. Fresh home. Fresh yep. home. Uh, yesterday made two months. Oh, so you super fresh home. Fresh home, yeah. Damn, bro, man. That's what's up, yeah, man. Yeah. And you already with the team. and Yeah, moving. Yeah. All right, we're going to get to that, man. <laughs> so, y'all go home. Oh, just tell us a little rundown about you, your history, you know, as far as you was raised in Brooklyn or, you know, mm -hmm. where you, and uh, your upbringing and all that, yes. and whether that you should get in trouble. And, yes, yes. So born and raised Flatbush, Canarsie, right? Um, first generation American male, born for my family, my whole family Jamaican. Okay. Right? So um, what I grew up seeing was um a whole lot of Jamaican Badman culture, you know what I'm saying? So my uncle definitely was all the way out there. All the way out there to keep it real. I remember my memory goes so far back. I remember as a child that the family saying we got to leave because my uncle was at war with some people in Brooklyn. 
Mm-hmm. We had to go live in California for like six months. What? Where, when I was a kid, because he was warm with some people as dangerous as him. And you was like, how old? I was like f- five years old, four or five years old. But my memory goes all the way back. I even spoke to my uncle in California the other day and asked him um, what year it was when he had sat me on his lap. And he acted like he was driving, and I had to hold a steering wheel and shit like that. And he had the darts machine, but his darts, you shoot it with a gun. Okay. That's when I first fell in love with guns. Okay. He had an all black, it looked like a Glock, but you shoot darts out of it. Okay. That whole time out there, I thought that gun was mine. You know, and my memory <laughs> goes so far back. And he was like, damn, how you remember that? That was like 1993. I was like four years old. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, I grew up seeing a lot of um, a lot of rough shit because um, the culture is vulgar. You know, they do everything hard. They do everything extreme. Love hard, fight hard. Yeah. Right? You know, mm-hmm. you get it. So um, my uncle showed me a lot of bullshit. A lot of bullshit at the time where he probably was doing it from his heart. He thought that's what he had to do. That's what he learned. Yeah. Um, he was only teaching you what he knew. What he knew. And um, I remember one time he took me to Philadelphia and lift up the mattress. I thought he owned a gun store. Mm. There was so many guns under there. I saw him, <laughs> yo, I'm telling you, it's crazy. He was like, what? Yeah, crazy. I'm talking about all types of guns, mm. all types of guns. Um, Even when I had got locked up, he said it was his fault. You know what I mean? He owned yeah. that. He owned that. And um, I love him, though, so. And um, you just don't know no better when you're growing up, and what you see, you emulate. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, that's what's dangerous. Dangerous. Um, he 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 was he was a wild dude. He was. You know, a wild I dude. mean, he didn't, he didn't, he. Didn't, I mean, like we like we said before, that was just his life. Yes. He was just trying to prepare you for life. I yes. guess. Yes. He didn't know the, the 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 damage that it could create. Yes. And, and you know, in your way of thinking and all that, that lead you to yes. picking up a gun. Going to jail, yes, and you yes. know, and, and following the same pattern. Yes, yes, absolutely right. And the damage lasts a long time, especially when you don't want to explore it and mm-hmm. figure out, you know, why and how and you know all that stuff. So during time, I had to ask those questions to myself and get real deep with myself. Do you know what I mean to transform my way of thinking? But um, so I go back to just how I was raised. Um, um, a lot of, lot of, lot of drugs. Um, my family sold weed because they were illegal immigrants. They couldn't okay. get no job. Um, my father got deported. I was two years old, so I didn't have like a, a, a strong male presence present all the time. Like my uncle was in and out of jail. Mm. When he come through, it was always a movie. He flies hell, jewelry, yeah. going on, on him. You know what I mean? Latest cars, chicks loving him. You know, I even seen him put his hands on a few of his chicks, beat mm. one of his chicks with his gun one time. She never even left him. I, that was mind blowing to me. Okay. Like, you know, so I'm like, all right, this is what chicks love, huh? But that's not, nah, not at all. So, yeah. But growing up young, you, you see all of that and you're like, yeah, this is what it is. Man, I'm bad man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how you think. So um, fast forward to like when I was like 13, 14 years old and my aunt, like I said, they couldn't work uh, legally because they was, you know, illegal immigrants. Um, she used to sell weed all the time back and forth to California. Um, when I was 14 years old, two, two, two gunmen ran in our crib, tied us up, tied my whole family up. Oh, what? How old you um, was? I was 14. Um, wow. One of them put the silence on a gun, put it right in my face because I thought I was tough, right? Mm. You know what I mean? And wasn't scared. And I was just wishing I could do something to protect my family and, and hurt one of these cats. He put the gun right in my face. And yeah, you was a kid, man. I was a kid. And um, at the time, you couldn't tell me that, though. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, to make yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. To make it funny, um, I think I think uh, Get Rich or Die Trying had just came out. And I'm, I'm I'm listening to that all night, the night before on my CD play. I'm thinking I'm 50, you heard? Thinking yeah. I'm pumped up like I'm 50, so I'm ready. Like, what? They ran in the crib, my aunt screaming, my mom's crying. I'm like, yo, I'm ready to kill one of them. Like, what y'all doing? Like, they, they looking for the weed. They looking for the money. They tied us all up in one big circle. Uh, that's my crazy, arm to man. your leg, your leg to her arm, the one big circle, put the silence on the gun. That shit is, that shit is super trauma. Uh, it was super traumatic. Um, They found my other uncle hiding in the bathroom in the shower, and right on cue, he started playing the madman role. He started acting like he didn't know how to speak, so he just started playing the madman role. Yeah. And my mom and my aunt fell in suit. No, he's crazy. Please don't kill him. Please, he's crazy. He don't got no sense. And it was like, in Jamaica, they call it a madman, mm-hmm. like, he mad, like he mad. So you're like, yeah, he a madman? They threw him to the ground. Go sit over there, then tied him up with us too. Ransack the crib. They ain't find nothing. All kind of threats. Um, the, the lady screaming and crying and just like, please don't kill us. In my mind, I'm I'm quiet the whole time, but I'm ready. I'm like, man, I, man, you don't even know, man. So dude put the gun in my face and was like, yo, I murder you right now. And I'm just looking him dead in his eyes, Pete. Like, no words. Like, I knew I was different. I was I knew I was different because I was like, yo, I wish I could murder you. You don't even know. Um. 
they took my little cousin downstairs with him to get away safely. And um, he came back with a neighbor and they cut us all loose. But since then, right then and there, I know that was the turning point in my life. Where I was like, yo, somebody got to feel it. Yeah. Somebody's going to feel it. I'm uh, like, I don't even care no more. You know what I'm saying? He was angry and shit like that, man. I mean, I mean after going through, that, through, going through that trauma, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You just angry. You like, mm -hmm. you're not going for that shit no more. Nah, not going for that. And mind you, I was already, wow. Because in elementary school, we was already fighting every day. Every time there was a block party, it got shot up. Somebody died. I was used to all that from young, right? Um, yeah. Like, gun violence was prevalent, right? And you see it and you hear it, and it's just you become immune to it. You become numb to it. Not everybody that grew up the way I grew up took the same route I did. So at some point, I had to learn that and understand with myself that it was a choice I made, too. Mm. Like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. I want to I be out there with the guys who I think is tough guys who busting it up and um I want to be a gunman. I want to be a gunman and um I made that decision at like 14 years old. Um so it went from fighting, it went from brawling, it went from all knives and stabbing to eventually listen, we're not doing that no more. Mm. This what we doing. We playing we playing with them guns and we going to bust it no matter where anywhere and once you in that state of mind like and I know you could relate, it's just like you don't think about consequences. No. You don't think about, you know, one plus one and all that. You don't think about all. Only time you, you're thinking about something like that is when you're planning some bullshit mm -hmm. to get away. Yeah. And that's what my mom was. My, my All my teenage years, it was just spent on being violent. Mind you, you, you don't have nobody talking to you, you know, telling you, like, anything good. Like, yo, be easy. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're speeding or you, mm -hmm. you, you start to, like, you know, go somewhere else with mm -hmm. this shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Real uh, shit. Uh, um, um, you know, you, you get lost. Real and shit. then you you in that zone. You in the street, you in the trenches, you like you Real know what I'm saying? You mad about how they ran down sack your your, your family and mm -hmm, shit mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not even you know, not even far, you know, you was you got into it right right I think you was fourteen years old, right? Mm -hmm. I was fourteen when it happened and that filled me with a lot of rage, a lot of silent rage. Yeah. Cause um I'm the type where I get quiet. I just watch, I observe, and I and, and you don't really know what I'm thinking. And I wasn't expressing my feelings because I didn't have no vocabulary for that. Yeah. I just, I just, I just know how to either get quiet or either get violent. Mm -hmm. That was my only two years at that time. I wasn't talking about no. And you feelings. had nobody really, no, nobody to like talk nah. to you and give you some guidance and shit. Nah, wasn't trying to hear that. Wasn't trying to hear that at all. Um, and all, all my, all my friends, you start talking about some feelings and shit like that. You soft, like what are you, yeah. what are you talking about? This nigga's a bitch. Like you know what I'm saying? Shit yeah. like that. Like what are you talking about? Dudes don't talk about feelings and emotions. They say that's a female trait. That's false. And I know, and that's when you go wrong. That's where you go you know wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because you start hiding your feelings and shit like that, and you become this monster yes. between all of you guys. Yes. Y'all just be a bunch of monsters. Yes. And the next thing you know, you'll be locked up, all yes. kinds of shit. Yes, right? yes. yes. So, so, yeah. so, so, um, so go ahead, keep going, you all know. All right, so. so I want to know when you, when, when you start to really get in trouble, that, you know, you got in trouble right. with, the, with the cops. Yeah, so, so crazy part about it is, my only interaction with the cops before I caught my case in 2009 was um like off of the humbug off of my, my aunt selling drugs and shit like yeah. that. Like one time they had bust a package when it came from Cali, right? And um they ran in the crib and you see how the cops treat you and then now um chilling outside. And you was the there? Car. Yeah, I was there. Definitely was there. They they threatened us with ACS and all that. You know what I mean? Had us scared to death. Had us scared to death that day. I was I was young. And um, I really couldn't understand that either, but I just reinforced why I ain't like police. Yeah. And um, so now I'm getting a little older, 15, 16. We smoking weed, we chilling, we drinking on the block. Police running down on us, harassing us, beating us up. I remember one time I had a, a in loving memory of my godmother. She passed away. They jumped me, dirty up my shirt. Police were. I, I got it with them though, but you know, it was only but so much I could I could do in that situation. One of me versus five, six of them. They jumped me, cuffed me up. Um. Took me to the precinct. Um, I ain't really, I ain't see the bookings or nothing then. So it's crazy because the only time I went to Rikers Island was in 2009 when I caught my case, right? So um, let me catch you up to speed. Um, I went to Canarsie in um, 2001, 2002. And, oh, uh, man, it was Canarsie is a place in Brooklyn. Yes. You know, for the audience that's from anywhere else in the world, you know? Yes, and, and right now they're calling it Flossie. Flossy, Flossy, yeah, they call it the floss, right? Why they call it Flossy? Because I'm talking about even when I got out there, I was surprised. I'm like, yo, some of my friends 
they got cars at 16, they the cribs and their yeah. parents never home. I'm like, why are these dudes doing what they doing? This is nice out here. So yeah. dudes out in Canarsie, you know, it's known for having bread. Yeah. They're fresh, they fly, you know what it's I mean? Big cribs and man, when I tell you we took it to a whole nother level out there though, we took it to a whole nother level out there because um we had the precinct on wheels out there after a while. Mm. Right? So being young and being influenced by the neighborhood, my whole neighborhood was 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 gang infested, like Flatbush Canarsie, that's Crip. Right, so we thinking we down and doing our thing, not knowing there's a whole deeper level to this game. Like you got to get sanctioned to do what you yeah. do. We ain't even know that. We wilding, saying we this, saying we that, putting in work till it got official because it got stamped by the real big Crips Ugh. who was hearing about what we was doing. Long story short, man, they sanctioned it and turned it hundred clocks, and to this day, that influenced a whole lot of youngsters. Mm. T. Dot Wu, rest in peace. Pop Smoke, rest in peace. Yeah. He wasn't 100 o'clock, but he was definitely under the influence of that Canarsie era where yeah. it's going crazy. It's turning up. Canarsie is definitely on the map on some violent shit. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So from there, like, your mind just ain't your mind at that time because you, like, you you willing to die yeah. and you willing to kill. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I, I bring it to the point where I eventually did kill, mm. right? And, um... I was sentenced to 15 of life for that. I okay. copped out, and it was such a senseless killing. Rest in peace, too, because I didn't even know him. I didn't even know him, but we met each other that day, bumped, situation, words, transpired, and threats came out. And This I, what happened in 2009. 2009, April, and um, I ain't take it lightly because, like I said, I'm living how I'm living, and I'm thinking how I'm thinking. Now you threaten me and tell me, wait right here, you're going to murder me. I'm like, damn, I can't take that chance. I'm not taking that chance. And I had my gun on me right there because that's just how I was thinking and moving. And that, mind you, the whole time he don't know that. But he talking all of this. And when he say, wait right here, I'll murder you, you got to go get a gun, bro. I got a gun on me. And now I let him feel it. And, you know, one of the worst decisions I made in my life. So did you copped out? You was a trial? I copped out. I copped out because I got caught the same day, Pete, and gun on me and everything. Wow. Word, I got caught the same day. This is what happened in Brooklyn. This is what happened in Brooklyn, Flatbush, Brooklyn. And, um... So in April 2009. It was in your neighborhood or nothing? It was in it was, my neighborhood. It was your neighborhood. Yeah, it was my neighborhood. I just ain't know him. I know him because, you know, it's big. It's big still. Yeah, yeah. Know him. I, I ain't know him, man. And, and to this day, I be thinking so deeply about it. Like, it didn't even have to go like that. It was so many other alternatives I could have taken at the time. But at the time, I, I ain't know no better. And at the time, I ain't want to do it. I'm going to keep it real with you. I didn't because we being transparent here, coming from where I'm from, you want to murder. Yeah. You don't think you somebody. I mean, you know, shit. Mm -hmm. he, they gave you what? You copped out to 15 years? I copped out and I was sentenced to 15 a life. I know you, so that means you went to the island. I went to the island. So months. how you felt about, for, this is the first time you get locked up. Yes. That's some real shit. And, yes. And, 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 and you going over that bridge and yeah. what was going through your mind. The first thing that went through my mind was this shit stink. Going all crossing that bridge, that shit stink. <laughs> shit smell like death. Like, yo, hold yeah, on, this shit stink. stink. I'm like, all right, so it does stink, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a, um I'm gonna listen twice as much as I talk. I got two ears and one mouth. I'm gonna be quiet, I'm gonna observe, I'm gonna watch what's what, and I'm gonna watch body language and I'm gonna be on point. Cause ain't yeah. nobody gonna do nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? So that was my mindset on the island. I'm fighting some serious shit. I don't know what you other dudes is fighting, and I don't know what type of time you dudes is on, but I'm not playing. So I, I was to myself. I was humble. When you got there in 2009, was it, was it like a lot of gangs? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And, and, and so are you affiliated with your gang? Nah, you know what, what I'm you? saying? So like I said, at the time, we was pumping out. Neutral. Yeah, we, well, we was pumping our own shit. And because I was so green to all that shit, I took a step back. Because I'm like, Yo, all right, let me really find out what's going on here before I just dive head first into them shit. And I don't know what I'm doing. And my head back is careless. One thing I was always taught, don't leave your head back careless. Mm. So I'm not affiliated with nothing, but I'm affiliated with my neighborhood. So once they hear your neighborhood, they already know, okay, yeah, some might be crip. Yeah. All right, cool. At one point I was, right? Right. It ain't amount to nothing. It amounted to this. So while I'm fighting this, I'm not going to compound it with more bullshit unless somebody try me. And then I show you what it is. So I got into a couple situations on the island, but I wasn't the aggressor. I'm going to finish it. I ain't going to start it. I had to whoop something out, um, knock this teeth out, all types of stuff. After that incident, dudes was like, all right, he quiet, he humble, but he dangerous. That's, so you, that, that's yeah. you, how long you was on the island? 18 months. 18 months, 18 and I was months. in the Beacon. Yeah, I was in Old Boy for two weeks, and then I went to the Beacon. 
I had um, a situation with the police where I got it shaken with them. And um, when, the, when the captain said he did his research and found out I was already in the building for 11 months, and he was like, yo, you so quiet. Like, I heard about you and this, like, how this happened, you know what I'm saying? So, so because I like how you move and I know what you're fighting, and you so young, mind you, I'm 20, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So he like, you know what, I'm going to give you a pass, this one on me, and you held it down. You know what I mean? They jumped me, whooped me out, but I held, listen, I fought back, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And um, he was like, yo, we're going to get you back to the area you was in because the officers are speaking highly of you. They say that on the low, you, you, you quiet, but you got influence. Like, dudes will watch you and listen to you, and mm -hmm. you keep the peace. You know what I mean? I'm on some yeah. grown man shit, but don't try me. This is not yeah. what we're doing. This is where I'm from. Don't try me. Don't think nothing sweet yeah. over here. You know what I'm saying? So I, I yeah, appreciate that. That's just the that way Jay is. You're going to move. You're going to be, as long as you respect me, we good, right? Yeah, we good. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I got I got family support. So I'm getting visits. Yeah. I'm seeing my peoples. I'm going to commissary. I'm eating. I don't need nothing from nobody. I'm all right. I'm just trying to fight this case. And yeah. as, as naive as I was at the time, I'm thinking, I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs> you got caught with the gun. You, you, you got witnesses pointing you out. You got, like, so you, you got caught right there and there? I got caught like 10, 15 minutes later on a dollar van. On Church Avenue in Flatbush. You know where I was going? With the same gun? With the same gun. Because I ain't think I killed him because he kept running down the block. So I was like, all right, I hit him up. You know what I mean? Like, I'm keeping this gun on me because I got to come back over here. I don't know what I don't know what to expect later. Thinking yeah. dumb. Thinking, just thinking dumb, bro. And um, No, it's just it's just, it's just ignorant. You know, you're not only yeah. thinking dumb. You're just ignorant and shit like yeah. that. You ain't really had nobody really ever tell you anything different. Yeah. So you doing whatever you're going to whatever it takes to survive in the streets. Yeah, yeah You know what I'm saying? Them, I mean, unfortunately, you learned that, yeah, yeah. you had a, you, you really, you know, it's a price to pay. A big price. You know what I'm saying? You big know, price. I mean, like, 15 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, shit. Oops. I never thought that far ahead in my life. <laughs> like, you like, that far ahead you know, 20 life. years old, Rikers Island, you fighting this shit, you over here, you know, just and thinking you're going home because you thinking really nothing of it. You know, or, or you might just get around it. You know what I'm saying? And, Lawyer rock me, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Well, the you smart thing was, I mean, you, you, I mean, if you felt that you was gonna, they got the gun, they got everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they gave you 15 years. I mean, it could have been 25 years. Yes, it could have been 25 years. That's a fact. That is a fact. And um, you know, and you know that. Oh my god! Because you know, I see the whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of money, likewise, a bunch of guys that we know, right? You know, likewise. I know. Likewise. 25 years for for a body. I'm glad you just said that. So at this time, I want to shout out my comrades, man. Hold your head, man. Like, your time is coming. Y all, y all, listen, and rest in peace to my comrades who died in prison, too. Real shit. Ugh. Like, And I lost a lot of mans in the street. And um, that's why I think so differently now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I lost some close comrades in prison. I'm talking about dead and gone. Pine box. And that shit touched me. Even everything I do now, I keep them in mind. Like, I'm doing it for you, too. And you'll never get to do this. How your prep? How you? How you? How you? How your people felt about um, you copping out to fifteen years and they just know. they wish they didn't have the life on it. They wish they didn't have the life on it because they knew the severity of the situation and they knew that you know I was dead to rights. So caught. you got fifteen to life. Yeah, so I have you fifteen to life. You on parole? On parole right now? I'm on parole right now. Yeah, yeah. and um, I earned six months. I'm supposed to be going to my parole board this month to come home April. And I earned six months. I'm proud of that. Wow. Yeah, I'm proud of that. That's a big. I'm gonna talk for about me. that. Hold yeah. up, but wow. that, was, that was I never heard see, shit. Uh, talk about it. I, I never had that fucking experience. Talk about like, it, right? <laughs> yeah, fuck no. Uh, I used to go to the fucking board and get get hit two years. Yo, two that, years. Yo. I'd be like, shit. I'd be coming out dizzy. Three. Dizzy. When I tell you, it had me stressed out. It had me stressed <laughs> out. When I'm like, oh, I'm about to go to the parole board. They're gonna slap me. Like, I just had an incident in Greenhaven with police again, got caught with a knife So you again. went down, so I want, that's what I'm talking, I want to talk about. So you copped out to 15 years. How your parents, how your people felt about that? Oh, I mean, what was man. going through your mind at that point? It's, I want to know because I want I want these kids to know yeah. what was going through your mind at that because reality really sunk the fuck Stress. in. Stress. You don't, you, it's unknown. So you, you know, don't, you don't know. You don't even, sometimes you, you be going through so much shit in the street, you don't even, you can't even see that far. You can't see that far. You know what I'm saying? You be in the street running around, then you find yourself in jail and be like, oh, you got a, you got 15 years. Oh, you got 10. You be like, damn. I'm going to be here all that time. Then you think about how the year, how long sometimes the year may be. Come on, man. 
<laughs> you, you know, you go through all kind of all shit, types huh? types of shit. Your mind is like, yo, you, the, the real shit, that's why you hear a lot of dudes who did time, like one of the biggest saying is one day at a time. Yeah, one day at a time. One day at a time. That's a, that's a fact. Everything else, you're going to bust your brain. You're going to go nuts. You're going to go nuts. Thinking about, I never thought, I never thought 15 years ahead in my life. Yeah. In my own life, about my own future. The judge told me 15 in life, and I'm like, damn, I'm doing the math, like what that is? And then my lawyer piece of shit he was sold me out told me I'm gonna do 13 off of that no when you got life you're doing the first number then you go to your parole board sometimes we you know we blame things on the lawyer too but sometimes we just be our ignorance of course of, of, of not really being on our job of course and, and, and going to the law library and, of course and, 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 and let me see how I can get around this shit let me see how I could work on this because there's other situations other cases that been way before me that of course probably they could have got you Last time, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's and sometimes my ignorance, we just be in there, you know, punching niggas out in front of me mm. and just laying low and not, and, you know, and you. So a million percent, Pete, and for the youngins out there, your lawyers will exploit that. Your lawyers will exploit that. The way, the reason I'm still like, like feeling some type of way about it is because this is somebody who was supposed to have my life in his hands. Like you know this law, my people's paid you. Yep. What you doing for me? Nothing. They exploited that ignorance. And that's what they're going to do. The system will exploit your ignorance and they will take every day out of you. You're going to serve every day if you ain't moving right. Yeah. If you ain't thinking right. You got to find yourself in there. So, um, long story short, man, the Rikers Island, the, the copping out, it took, a, it took a toll on me where instead of for the worse, I channeled it and made it for the better. Mm. I developed a whole curriculum for myself i'm a workout i'm a read mad books i'm a pray i'm a meditate mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a try to just get fit in every way i can for when i get out of here i'm gonna be way better way better than before how That's i right. came here i'm telling you like so so i remember like because when i first went up north it was 2010 you went downstate i went to downstate how was that experience for you I went bro? to the box from downstate right it's demonstration they call it I didn't even know what that is. When police telling you to do something and two two or more people, let's say three or more people, decide we're not doing it. So now we look like we're putting up a protest. And we not we just we just we just holding our own because we feel like we not doing what you just said to do, but not knowing that, all right, that's a that's you breaking one of the rules. Mm -hmm. They threw me in the box on some like I'm like, What, you dead ass? Like you going so I, I spent um I spent um what it was, Thanksgiving. I spent uh, Christmas and I spent New Year's in a box. That was my first experience up north. How was that, man? I mean, you just was in this, you know, was that just to be out, have a little freedom, have a little, and then all of a sudden, you 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 in a box. In the, in the coop. You barely, they don't even know what the fuck will happen. You like, coop. And, and downstate coop is, 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 man, it's locked down, you heard? Yeah. You, on a, you on like a tier with like three, four cells, probably two, four, six cells, the shower on, on the scene, same tier with you, some mini tier. So you ain't going nowhere. If you ain't got no visit or nothing, you in that cell. You in that cell. And it was wintertime. You know, I was still going out to the rec pen, though. I go out to the rec pen. I hear dudes talking about they going to throw doodle on each other. I'm like, Yo, so I'm, I'm, this is my first experience with all this. I'm 21. And I'm like, yeah, dudes dead ass talking about they about to throw doodle on each other, shit on each other. I'm like, nah. I'm like, yo, CO, get me out this rec pen. I'm done. I don't even want no rec. Put me yeah, back you in see the all kind of shit. Yeah, all, all kind of dumb shit. shit. How you felt about... How you feel about the the, the CEOs and them um, uh, telling you to squat down? Let me see, you know, let me see your private parts, your ass, and all kind of shit. Less than a human, less than an animal, less than something you can never get used to. Sometimes you even gotta really put yourself in a in a, in a, in a mental space to enjoy your visit because you know what's coming after. Yeah, because dudes don't talk about that shit. You know what I'm saying, but that's that's like that's that's the worst in the fucking world, man. For yeah. you to be. That's, you need to be squatting down, showing the next man your ass. Yeah, literally, literally, ain't no joke. And then you got some, some like, COs yeah, the where, there, bro. Let's talk about how you got some COs where if they feel like you ain't do it right, they like nah, bend over, cough, squat, yeah, do, all do that, that shit, shit all over yeah. and all that. Yeah, and if you like nah, you ain't with it. That's another. Trust box me, I know, man. I used to go to to to, to shit because I used to be like, man, get the fuck out of here, man. Mm -hmm. Like I'm squatting down. That's it. That's I ain't it. spreading up. Yeah, none of that. Yeah, oh, big. you not? No, right? No, I'm yeah. not. Yeah, box. straight to the box. Yeah, straight yeah, to the box. Yeah. I'm going to the box. All right, let's yeah. go. So so for Got me, me confused, bro. You, you, yeah, real shit. Shit. And, and 
for me, I got tired of that shit my last trip to the box. So like I said, I had uh, shook out with the police, and I did that for one of my comrades. They was they was um being aggressive with him, and and, and I you got involved. I, yeah, I couldn't stand for that shit. I couldn't stand for that shit. What you what you what you got what you got into what you, what you did? Shook out. We shook out with them. Went crazy in, in Greenhaven. Yeah, in Greenhaven Correctional Facility. We shook out. We 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 shook out. Gave them all we got, and um. They you must know, have beat your ass, though. They beat our ass. But but one thing I'm going to tell you, at that point, I was so numb and, and so hardened. that I was like, they soft. Even their hits wasn't feeling like nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when they finally subdued me and get me handcuffed and all that, I count my blessings because it was an officer there who he was dumb. dumb he was he was dumb cool. Let's put yeah. it out there. You got some officers in there when you do yeah, your time. Yeah, of course. Time. I mean, yeah. you know, just because... They got, you know, it's a job, man. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? I mean, yeah. it could be cool, yeah. but they got the ones they, they dickheads. Exactly. Up north, you really find all the dickheads. Exactly. All the so, fuck the world, because they different, you know, different. But 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 I agree with you, and then I'm still going to tell you that in Greenhaven, though, it was a lot of dickheads, though. It was a lot of dickheads, even though it wasn't all the way up top. And I've been up top. I've been to Attica twice. You know what I mean? I, I, that's what I did all uh, nine months in upstate. And um, it was that box trip right there that really knocked some sense into my head, because it was halfway through my bed. I got 15 of life, murder, got caught with the gun in the street. Now I'm in prison fighting the authority. Yeah. And I just got caught with a knife on me, right? So I had a, I had a plexiglass knife, like like with a rubber band on the joint. You know how that go. You got to yeah. smuggle in. And I knew I had it on me, but I, I was like, I'm going to have to sacrifice myself right now because they, they, they about to get aggressive with my son. And I what just the hell you had of that? I had that. I had it. I had it attached to my 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 balls and my dick, bro. You know how you got to yeah, smuggle yeah. in prison. You, you were just yeah doing yeah. what you had to do. Yeah, bro. Yeah, because you know the yard. The yard is like the streets. Yeah. For those of y'all that don't know, and you know, I hope y'all never know and have to know. Like when you when you in prison, <laughs> the streets is the yard. Everything that you could think of is there. Is there for like, sure? For I'm, sure. I'm I'm, I'm 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 shooting dice in the yard. Dice is illegal in prison. Where we get dice from? Dudes bringing dice back from wherever. And I'm saying we shooting CeeLo. We 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 playing with. You money. just don't ask no questions. They yeah. just there. You understand what I'm saying? You yeah. got we got dollar bills. Yeah. I'm talking about twenties, fifties, hundreds in prison, shooting dice, gambling, and you in the streets and dudes is moving like they move in the street, but in prison in the yard. So you got to be on point. So you got so after fighting the police, mm -hmm. you went to the box. I went to the box. I copped out immediately. I knew I was wrong. <laughs> I didn't even yeah. play with them. Yeah, I'm like, you, yo, what, what you did, giving did, me right did, now? Did you what box you stay? You stay in the upstate. What, Southport? No, nah, Upstate Box. Oh, upstate yeah, box. they turned the whole joint to, so they got a part that's cadre, where the cadre dudes, they like, they cut dudes here in the box, they sweep up the gallery in the box, They okay. but they live in that part. The Most of the jail is the box, where you locked in. You Ooh. locked in, you could have a bunkie, or you could have a single cell, but your rec pin is in the cell, the shower is in the cell, cell big as that's hell. That's new shit. New shit. They got, yeah, they got. You know what, because uh, I, I did an interview with, I think it was uh, oh, who yeah. was that? I think what, so one of the guys. I think it was uh, I think it was uh, Euro, Euro the guard. Yeah, yeah. I, th I don't know. He he told me the box, the yeah. box, and I'm like, yeah, the, yeah. Upstate. I'm like the box. Yeah, I'm conf I'm like the yeah, box. Pete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got upstate the box, bro. I'm talking. I know about, about Southport. I was there. I was yeah. Southport. Yes, yes, and um, so I think I think um. You know, like a shoe 200 where you housing more than 200 dudes in solitary. So pretty much the whole function of the jail is to keep these dudes confined during their box time. And that's what upstate is too. Just like Southport, but Southport was way grittier back then. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. But upstate, it go down too, but they kind of smartened up the way how they separate everybody. Yeah. You don't really get to interact with nobody. You got your rec pin in the cell. Like I said, you got your shower in the cell. You got everything only, there. Everything there. You got, you got visits only on the weekend. And it, and it's either you Saturday or Sunday, and it alternate. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's the new shit. That's the new shit. Yeah, see this shit they do, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, and and quiet is kept. They just gave dudes tablets in the box, though. So now you in the box and you got the tablet. They got the phone on the tablet. Yeah, it got all kind of education. They got the tablets on tablet. Rikers Island. Mm -hmm. They got the you know yeah. they got the PlayStation and stuff. Yeah, on Rikers Island too. So well, when I went to the box that time for me, Pete, it was an eye opener because, like I said, I was reflecting on how I got there. And now I'm reflecting on what I'm doing, and then I started reflecting on shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay here. Yeah. Like at this rate, I'm gonna stay here. Like, what am I doing? I got to get myself out of this. So that curriculum that I had developed for myself years earlier, I needed more discipline to stick to it the way I needed to to better myself. 
And I had dudes like Boss in my ear telling me the whole time, yo, shout out to Bossolini too. Like, yo, bro, you better than what you're doing. Like, you better than what because he already had mad timing and already had been through all types of shit where he see it in me and he like, yo, bro, that ain't the route. That ain't the route. Destruction on top of destruction, pain on top of pain, and you ain't the only one feeling it. Your family going to feel it with you, especially if you got a, a strong support system. They feeling it just as much as you Yeah. Are. So I was like, damn. They going to do all the shit with, with you. Mm-hmm. I was like, I got to shape up. Yeah, you got to shape up. Man. Yeah. Family, you put, you know, people don't realize that when you, in jail, you put your family, you got the, that support that if you do have a family, they going through it with you. Yes. Big they time. going through it. They love you and all that. They go, go through all the shit. You go yeah. through it. You go to the box, they go through it. Yes. When they don't hear from you, you don't, you don't call them. That means you got yourself in trouble. Yeah. They worry. They have to call back the facility. Yeah. Where's he at? Where, yeah. you, know, where's, you know, where's Yaga at? Yeah. Yo, I haven't Stress. heard from him in, in two weeks. Yeah. And, you know, you're in the box and shit Stress. all lost. It's been many times when I call Mama Love after a while. She like, yo, what's up, son? Like, you trying to give me a heart attack? I'm not hearing from you stressing yeah. me out. I'm like, damn. I so it really love. sucks, man. You know, sucks. you love you, you love your people. You got you can't. You gotta just you know get your shit together, man. Because yeah. it, it ain't really worth, worth getting the family caught up to all that shit, man. That shit mm-hmm. is complicated. So that's and what I did. Got at least you was together. blessed. Yeah. A lot of brothers ain't handle family like that. I don't you know? take it for granted. I'm yeah. telling you. I, I'm listen. I know mad dudes, Pete. Yeah. All kinds of dudes, different walks of life. Yep. Shout out to all I the bet. comrades doing time. I'm talking about, I know mad dudes. I see mad different experiences and I live mad different experiences where I'm not taking one second for granted anymore. That, I see I'm, that. I'm humble and I'm appreciative and I'm going to live Facts. it to the fullest because Facts. I'm talking about one of my first comrades to die in prison was 26 years old. He had 230 to life. Mm. You understand? And, 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 um, I didn't even know my son was doing what he was doing to get by because he couldn't handle that time. Fucking with that dog food, right? I didn't even know. Like, God bless the dead, and it was laced with fentanyl. Took him off the map. 26 mm-hmm. years old. That was my first comrade to pass, right? My last comrade that passed home, he had 17 in. God bless the dead, though, you know what I'm saying? So long story short, I'm, I, mm-hmm. I, I get it. And um, I shaped up, and God blessed me with a wonderful woman. You know what I mean? Shout out to my baby. And um, when I came out the box, I went back to Attica. That's where I met my wife. Okay. I never even knew her in the street. We've been together ever since. How long you was in the box? Nine months. Okay. Yeah, nine months straight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, before we were, I wanted to know how, how long you was in the box. Nine uh, months. Nah, yeah, I did nine months straight. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then you left to Attica. And I went back to Attica after that. That was my second time going to Attica, right? So um, when I got out and I went to Attica that time, they give you a manual or some shit like that that I never, you like, you never read shit like that. They give you the rule book. You, you ain't reading that, but something told me read it this time. And when I read it, I saw that they had a volunteer, like, group that you could attend that, that is run by an organization called Cephas mm-hmm. from Western New York. And you got these old people coming in volunteering their time to kick it with you. Yeah. Just, just just trying to find out, like, what's up with you. And, yeah, yeah. Yo, blew me away. From so, the town and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I signed up and I went. And from there, I signed up for college, but they said that it's so weird up there that you got to be on the waiting list for a while. I'm like, I can't do that. What I'm going to do? All right. I said, all right, let me just focus on this workout while I'm, you know what I mean? Get yeah. myself together and get my mind back right. But I want to go to school and I'm reading all my books again. Long story short, I met my wife. And um, man, she's such a blessing because the support that she gave was out of this world is what I needed. She, gave, she visited me so much. The officers thought I was from Rochester. We got married in Attica, right? Wow. We're the mother. So then we go on a draft, and we end up in Sing Sing. For those of y'all who don't know what the draft is, is when, you know, they pack you up because you're going to another jail. Not when I let nobody know. They don't let you know. No. You just they don't pack let you up know. in the middle of anything. Yo, pack up. They you be like, what? You know. Where are we going to go? Yes. Yes. So um, when they sent me to Sing Sing, that's one of the best things that they could have did in my bid. And because I was already in Green Haven, that was wild. Yeah. When I got to Sing Sing, I wasn't open off of the shit I saw. Because yeah. I was like, all right, I've seen this already. And that's not what I want right now. Yeah. Because I know so many dudes, I got right up in college. You know what I mean? I was blessed to be able to take the test where one of my boys was like, yo, I'm going to get you in to take the test. And the rest is on you. Pass the test. Got into college. Told my wife I got into college. She like, that's what's up, baby. And I also that's messed up. up. Hell fucking I, yeah. Yo, look. You look, was going to that handle your business. Thank you, bro. But I messed up, though, because I told her, I said, yo, babe, but um, one of my boys I know trying to get me this job, I don't think I really want it, though. College is good for me. She said, oh, daddy, what? 
He said, not in this family. She said, I'm glad you got into college, but we work too. You heard? Go get that job. I'm yeah. like, all right, man. Damn, all right, yeah. I'm going to go work. I started working in the transitional service area, bro. Now I'm seeing all the dudes coming into prison, and I'm seeing all the dudes who got to take all uh, um, anger management classes, ART. I'm seeing all the dudes who got to take ART. ART, ART come, still exists. Still exists. Still exists. Yeah. That, the, the parole board want to know that you took ART. It's mandatory for those of y'all that got a, a violent that, case. You know, yeah, that, violent right? case. Yeah. I see. I see the dudes who got to take the drug cases. It's called ASAT, right? ASAT and KSAT. Yeah, that, That's yeah. there too. That's still there. Yeah. I, I didn't have to take that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't have to take that either. You know what I'm saying? Thank <laughs> yeah, God. you didn't have to take that nah, either. Nah, hell no. Word. So from there, Pete, I mean. It wasn't no looking back from there. I'm doing my thing in school. I'm doing my thing at work. Then Corona happened. Where you met your wife at? In Attica. I mean, from where she from? From Yonkers. Shout out nine one four. Yeah, like I'm, I'm like I'm like I'm like adopted by nine one four right now. I'm I'm I'm, I'm married to a, a Yonkers native, and I'm working with nine one four United. We are gonna get to that too. We gonna, gonna get to that. Things, we gonna get right? to that. Yeah. So um, when we get to uh, Sing Sing and Corona happened, it was rocky for everybody. I mean, like it was so much stress. No visits. No nothing. My wife can't see me how she want to see me. She, we can't talk how you want to talk. It was a real tough time where if you wasn't strong mentally, you would have broke. You know what I'm saying? So by the time that passed, God opened up another door for me because I ended up going to Woodburn, which is a medium. The first time I ever went to a medium, it got real for me. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm in a medium? I couldn't see this 10, 13 years ago where I'm really getting this close to go home. I'm still working in transitional service, and then I earned the two years to make me eligible for six months early release, but I got to go earn it when I go to these people. If they don't agree with how I'm living and moving right now, that six months don't matter. But if they do, then my six months going to count. My six months counted. My six months counted. And I'm supposed to be going, to my, doing parole. Day. Hey, I'm supposed to be going to my parole board this month to come home April. I'm talking to you right now, and I'm supposed to be going to a parole board this month. That's, to come a, home blessing, April. Man. That's a blessing, but I earned it. You earned it, though. You worked. I worked. I had Congratulations, man! College, you. you did all your thing. That's yeah. that's what it's about. Thank you. Because that's that's what that's what if you going to do a bit and you caught up, and you doing time, that's how you want to do your time. You want to mm -hmm. go in there and fuck being in the yard, yeah, and getting yourself real. caught up and all that, and, and, and thinking that you never gonna hit the the, the, the never coming home, and you gonna just not even think think for the moment. That's not you. Gonna, you ain't gonna get nowhere like that. You no know way. what I'm saying? You got to be able to just go in there. and Go to school, educate yourself, and mm -hmm. all that. Get your mm -hmm. GED. Yeah, and just like you did. You yeah, know, I got get, my GED. Get your, get, yeah, there you go. Yeah, while I'm going to college, and yeah. Now you, so you supposed to be going to parole? Uh, uh that's crazy. Yeah, this month. Somebody else told me that too. They was like, "Yo, I, I ain't seen my parole." I was like, "What?" Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow. And I feel so good about that because I cherish every single day that I'm out here. Where I'm like, "Damn, I'm really supposed to still be in there, going to the board." So now you don't go to the board. Nah, I went to my board in September. Okay, yes, and, what I'm and, saying. And they granted me release, and I came home October. Oh, okay, you understand? October sixteenth, after fourteen and a half years, and I'm only thirty four right now. Yeah, you young man. Yeah, so that's what you're I'm young, trying to you're tell you. Young, you focused. Yeah. So, so you came home when? October sixteenth. And wife, you still with you the whole time. The whole time, I'm, I'm I'm with my baby right now, going on seven years together, going on six years married. Congratulations, man! Thank you, big bro. And That's what's up, man. man. I love that. I'm telling you, she's official. Cause you know, because you don't really find no girls that do biz with nobody. No, especially you know? we didn't even know each other in the street. Huh? We ain't know each other in the street. Yeah, it happens like that. You know, yeah, sometimes yeah. it happens like that. It's just yeah. I seen it before. Yeah, but you don't really see it a lot. So peep back game. in the days, definitely you <laughs> see that shit a lot. So, so peep game, right? I'm doing time with who's now my brother-in-law, and he from Yonkers, and he like, yo, bro, call this number. Somebody want to talk to you. I'm like, what? I'm like, man, I'm trying to focus on getting home right now, bro. I done spent so many years chasing a chick and needing to just some kind of female companionship, and, and my son who got 80 to life, he like, what you, what, bro? He said, yo, bro, I, I will let any chick come my way right now. I need it, bro. I got 80 to life. But you know dudes doing stuff like He said, just yeah. give it a shot. Call and... I took his advice and I called him. Me and my wife been rocking ever since, bro. And now, like, I'm bro that's my brother in law. He home. He did 19 years. He's home. <laughs> um, you know, uh, his he just threw his son's birthday party to uh, Logie. Shout out the family, man. Shout out the family. Shout out my family in Yonkers. Shout out my family in Flatbush. Shout out my that's family right. in Aussie. You know what I'm saying? So, and like I said, been home since October 16th. Just got accepted into Rockland Community College, right? I'm going for engineering. Oh, you focus, You know man. what I'm saying? I just passed my driver's test last week. I got my license coming. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? We moving, people. Oh, we moving. We, we moving. Move and check this fly shit out. Just from the interactions that I have with my parole officer, he called me one day out the blue and was like, yo, the vibe I get from you, you're a responsible young man. He said, take this name and number. A job might be waiting for you. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away on the phone. I can't even, I'm like, what? Like, you hear PO, you think, what? You got to, what? He's like, yeah, call this job number. They don't care about your background. It's sanitation. I went on an interview with them the other day. I might be getting it. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's or, a good job, you, too. You understand what I'm saying? That's so focused. They said um, you get a 90-day probation period, and then you're in the union. Yeah, that's focus. You know what I'm, no, I'm telling you, that's yeah. focus. Pete. That's never looking back. Good benefits. Take care of your family. Come on, Pete. You young. So, so now it gets even better. This is what I'm trying to tell you, young, young, young people out there. What you want, you will get. And I'm talking about from the good to the bad. What you saying you want, you're gonna get. The universe is gonna hear you. You want all that bullshit. You want to be in the streets. You want to think you the man, and people need to know your name. Your name need to ring bells. You're gonna get all that that come with it. And it's death, it's destruction, it's a lot of bullshit. When you get older, it don't amount to nothing. A young fool becomes an old fool, right? Uh -huh. So at the end of the day... Talk to them. Come on now. So at the end of the day, it gets even better because 914 United comes into play now. And when I come home, fresh off the come home, I go to an elementary school to kick it with the kids, fourth and fifth graders. Like, I'm like, I'm blown away. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in the, like the auditorium of the school talking to these fourth and fifth graders, and they talking about Fortnite, and I'm like, yo, what's that? And they looking at me like I'm an alien, and they're like, you don't know what's Fortnite? And so I let them calm down. I said, y'all know why I don't know what's Fortnite? I just did 14 and a half years in prison. I don't know what's Fortnite. They don't got, they, they mind was like, what? What you in the jail for? I, it was just amazing to give the yeah. kids something that they could relate to, and they're like, yo, and I'm like, yo, don't take this path. So now, after the elementary school, I go into a detention center, uh, Woodfield. Okay. Yeah, I'm kicking it with the teenagers. One of them just copped out to 19 years. Bittersweet. Bittersweet. So I'm going in there to try to do some good, but I got to leave. And it's hard for me to just leave them there like that because I know what it feel like and I know what I just came from. And I'm like, damn, he 18 years old, just copped out to 19 years in prison. That shit fuck with me. And it made me know why I'm going to continue to do this work. I'm going to continue to do this You know what's so work. crazy that you say that, right? Mm -hmm. Because, and, and I can relate, right? I ain't been on Rikers Island there in uh, 30 years. Mm -hmm. and, and I went to Rikers Island, and I could not believe it. Come on, man. I'm like, oh, sh Like It was just like, it's like my calling. Like, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I feel, mm -hmm. And, and my, every time I leave, I be like, damn. Damn. You know, I, I was, this guy's asked me for a Bible. I got to get the Bibles. Yeah. And this, that. And in my mind, I'm like, you know, I'm trying to like, you know, I, I've done a bunch of stuff on them yeah. since I've been going. I've been, yeah. couple, you know, been going for a couple of weeks. I haven't gone lately because... Um, I start going on the top of the year. I'm going for training. Hopefully, yeah. I'll be getting a job there, yeah, doing it bro. permanently. Where well I can deserve. go there on Thursdays and, and on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Well and education department, regular prison, well you know, deserve. regular jail. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm well saying. And, but I went. I went in there with no intentions of mm -hmm. nothing like that. I just. Mm -hmm. I was just. I felt blessed, and I want to always go back. Yeah. and see, and yeah. see. Yeah, and I and I had the opportunity, and I ain't gonna lie, that shit. What me? I was well, like, oh uh, shit, yeah. You know, it's like yeah. I, every time I leave, I feel yeah. like uh, you feel like I got. Shout I can't out. just, I can't just leave them, and I be, yeah. you know, doing shit. I bring them pizza on my birthday yeah, instead of going on, to man. Vegas, like I usually do. I yeah. be gone. I went to Rikers Island with twenty pies a piece. Of. So, so peep game. Shout out to Pete too. Shout out to Pistol Pete because I, I shared this with him before we started, and I'm gonna put it out there. I told him when I was like 14, 15, 16 years old, I was so in tune, like. With, with the bullshit where I was watching and listening to everything that would just make you more hard. Like, mm -hmm. you just want to be the hardest. I saw a documentary and it was talking about Rikers Island and you was on there, Pete. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about, you was talking crazy how you two razors in the mouth and mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about at that age, you left a lasting impression on me. So to be sitting here with you right now, I'm talking about life comes full circle and to be doing what you're doing now because the influence is deep. Come on, shout it out. Like, that's appreciate what I'm saying. You, shout, man. shout it out, bro. For appreciate real. Like, you, man. I'm, I'm keeping it real with you. Nah, appreciate Influence you. Influence runs deep. Like, the children yeah. are listening. We watch yeah, they are. And we taking heed. So I'm like, I want to be hard like Pete. Oh, you got to put two raises. You got to, you got, oh, I'm going to be ready yeah. for that. Uh -huh. but, like, look, it gets you nowhere. Yep. It gets you fact. nowhere, man. That's a fact. And I just love that you're going back in there and doing your thing, bro, and it's well deserved because you're doing great things, man. What's up with the nine one? What's up with your, with your team, man? Oh my god, the team is amazing. Shout out to the team. Like, I'm overwhelmed all the time. 
We like we threw our first annual sneaker gala this year. They've been in existence for three years, and and to hear that they just threw the first gala this year, that mean they was grinding. They wasn't playing. Now they was like, all right, let's throw something where we could all celebrate the successes. And to come home and to be a part of that right away, where I was like, oh, you had congressmen in the building, you had Styles P in the building, yeah, right. man, it was official. You know, I got wifey with me. We did yeah, join of course. it. Like, look at all this, like enjoy. She was with you behind. She was with you of in the course. struggle. She needed to beat you right here. Of course, Shit. every every part of the success. So I'm like, man, this is amazing. And then, like I said, I went into the elementary school. Shout out to Jo. Like, you're doing amazing stuff. Keep doing what you're doing, big bro. Yeah, Jay will do bro, great things. Amazing stuff. And, like, you so selfless. Shout out to the whole team, the Shout whole Yonkers. Shout out to the team, bro. Shout out to the team. Yo, like, they out there focused, man. There's too many names to mention, but I'm going to try. You know what I mean? Janita, Diana, Kim, Christina, Dom, yeah. Blame, Euro. Like, like boss, y'all already know. It's too many to mention. If I forgot your name, I didn't forget your name. If I didn't mention your name, don't kill me. Like, listen, <laughs> I love y'all. I love the, the way y'all embraced me and just accepted me and just see that my heart is pure. My yeah. heart is genuine. Yeah, and yeah, I feel yeah. like that's what's always carried me. My the heart is pure. Yeah. I can see that too. Thank you. Go, you, you focus. You know what I'm saying? I'm focused. You gonna make it. You, gonna, you, gonna, yeah. you got great things coming. Yeah. And you got a great job coming. Yeah. You got to stay focused with that. You got everything else that you got going. Yeah. Plus, we got your information. Yeah. So we definitely going to stay in contact. I'm yeah. definitely, I got a bunch of things going on. So I'd like to take you on one of my trips and journeys to Rikers Island. Yeah, of course. I think, I think you'd you, you, I think you'd be perfect to of go course, in there. Of course, appreciate and you. And be part of the whole dog in the yard team. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And well, but yeah. I, I, I appreciate that. I, I feel the vibe and I see that, I see what you're doing. Thank and you, you. And you fresh out. Fresh you out. brand new, you Fresh know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that minute. should be your motivation for those out there that come home and not doing shit. You know what I'm saying? They want to just go ahead on the smoke and yeah. you know and not run around and not and not get nah, focused. And nah. you see, you see this brother here. He yeah. came home, not even shit. Two point three seconds, he getting all his yeah. shit together. We ain't playing with you it. You know, you gotta be want. You gotta be. You gotta want it. You gotta want it. And whatever you want, you can get. Listen to me, young people. Whatever you want, you can get, and you will get. Just know why you want it. You understand? So I kick it with the youth and I tell them, like, you got to, the same way they was trying to make us do current events in school, who, what, when, where, why, and how, and all that, do a current event for yourself, for your life. Who are you? What are you doing? When are you doing it? Where are you doing it? Why are you doing it? And if it pass those questions right there of value, with value, and then you get to the how. Yeah. If the why ain't about nothing, we're going to forget it. Yeah. But if the why is about something, then I want to figure out how I'm going to do it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Current event your own life, bro. Don't make the judge tell you 15 years ahead and 25 Talk years ahead. Talk to them. Let them know. Because like, you're talking to the, even, even to the brothers on lockdown right now. Cause we are, this interview is about to be on Rikers Island. Yeah, They're going to be able bro. to see it. And so, they can, they, so it's good for you to tell them and let them know. Like even the ones on lockdown right now. I'm telling like, you, man. For real. They need like, to get this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Get that second chance. You got to run with it and make run it right. It. Run with it. Because before you know it, you 30 something, you 40 something, yep. you 50 something, and you got nothing to show for it. You're gonna be Absolutely. bitter. You're gonna be mad, you heard? Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna be, be mad. You're gonna be sick. You're gonna be looking like a poop putt, mad at the world, and yep. it ain't nobody fought with yours. Yep. Now you you just you just dusty. And who wanna be dusty? Yeah, what you think about um oh yeah, I got about prison reform. You think it's necessary? I mean Of course. This is my goal. My goal is of prison course. reform. It's it needs a whole system. Very necessary because um the oppression that we subjected to while we doing time is uncalled for. Sometimes while you in there, the officers act like you harm their family. The officers treat you like you harm them. You know what I'm saying? So now they take it out on you, and then when it's time to get visits, they take it out on your family. Mm. And a lot of us ain't going for that. So then now you gotta, you know, you gotta do something. Yeah, you feel disrespected. Feel disrespected. They jumping on dudes. They whooping dudes out. They violating dudes. They keeping you mad. Oh, anything you could think of is happening when you go inside of these prisons. And you like, yo, this ain't right. Like, I know I want it to be a hard knock. Yeah. But I'm like, all right, so this is what I got to be subjected to where, like, they don't even have to answer for the bullshit they do. So why the hell I'm getting all this repercussion? Why I'm getting all these consequences? Who, gonna, who, who, gonna, who they got to speak to? I, I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to have to make them feel it. Mm. Because they get away with murder, literally. With murder. Literally with murder. And I'm saying? So my last comrade that passed, like I said, God bless the dead. Police whooped him out all crazy and sing sing for nothing. For nothing. Bust him in his head with the baton. Then when he sent him to the coop, he in the coop 
and the police saying that, oh, you want to fight with officers? You ain't getting no food. You're going to starve. He pissing blood. He had to get some kind of, like, situation for his heart. He never even had heart problems. Then they end up sending my boy to Auburn. Sad story, man. And that's where he died in Auburn because Auburn. he needed medical attention and they never brought it to him. And my son was only, like, 38 years old. Yeah. And he, he had 17 in at the time. And, and, and he dead and gone. Re Yo, Remo never made it home. Show. Rest in peace, man. Never rest made in, it home. Never made it home. Rest in peace, man. Prison reform is very necessary. Absolutely. Very necessary, man. Yeah, man. Um, um Appreciate you, Yaga, man. I appreciate you, know what I'm saying? you bro. I, I want you to know it's, yeah. it's a blessing having you. I appreciate you know what I'm saying? that, bro. Just know that this platform is here for anything that you working mm. on. Yeah. You want to ever come back in the future. We just, you know, this is here. Yeah. You can always come back. Let us know yeah. your, 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 your progress. You know, Thank everything you, you achieve. I appreciate you know, you want to share it. You know, if you go always more than welcome. This is your house. This is, yeah. our, this is your platform. I really appreciate that, You know that, what I'm saying? Well, so just know you can always <laughs> come back, all right? I do. Thank you. Appreciate I appreciate you, my brother. You. Right. Already know, man. It's your boy, Pistol Pete. Dog in the yard. Alright, say that. Oh. <laughs> yo, what up? You already know it's your boy Pistol Pete. Welcome back to Dog in the Yard. Today we are here. You already know, like I said earlier, front of the street chicks. I just had my, you know, my favorite, you know, fish sandwich and all that. You know what I mean? And with that being said, I want to thank first and foremost. Y'all got for coming through. Keep doing your thing, my brother. You know what I'm saying? I like what you're doing. I love what you're doing. You know, you out there with your United, uh, 9, uh, 914 United from Yonkers. I keep up, you know what I'm saying? And I'm here for whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? This is your platform, like I said. Get at me. It's your boy Pistol, dog of the yard. Dollar top of the hour and not a minute late Bullets disintegrate, you try snatch off this dinner plate I asked about you in your hood, they said you been a plate Hustling for years and still dealing beginner's weight While we done leveled up a couple of times To show you how to make a pound